Hey everybody, it's Jacob with J&J &J Engraves. Uh, taking a little time today to make a video for you. Um, this is basically an introductory video for how to process images strictly using Lightburn. Uh, I'm not using Photoshop, anything else. I'm just taking a picture from Google that I found, putting in Lightburn, processing it, processing it in Lightburn, and then um, showing you guys the results. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people that have issues just getting started with pictures and I'm hoping this this video will at least get you headed in the right direction. There's a lot more that goes into photos and, and engraving photos and really it takes a, a, a bit of time to hone that skill. It's a lot to do with uh, learning, learning your machine, its capabilities, um, what lens you're using is going to factor into this. Um, for this video I'm using a 100 watt CO2 laser engraver with a two and a half inch lens focus. That's that's my setup. Um, but you, you may have something completely different. That's probably going to be one of your, you know, about two and a half inch lens is probably about the, the, the furthest distance you want to go before you really start losing details. Anything more than that is really going to be more for like engraving and, and, and not fine detail. But if you want the best, you know, details possible, go with a one and a half inch lens. Uh, I have to do some modifications to my machine to uh, make that happen, but it might be something that's worth doing in the future. But for now, my two and a half inch lens focus, my 100 watt CO2, I feel like I'm getting some good results out of it. And I just want to take a few minutes and share a little bit of my knowledge that I've come across. And, and like I said, this is all using light burn. Um, if you're using another, um, laser engraving software this this probably won't work as well for you um, but if it's similar you know just try to follow along what I'm doing here but either way um, I hope you learned something if you have any questions leave them in the comments below I'll try to get around to answering them as much as I can um, and I'm gonna try to just do more videos um, kinda going over basic things so if you guys have questions and, and wanna know how to do certain things let me know and I'll make a video on it for you or I'll try to um, but hope you enjoy and uh, leave a like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you enjoy it and thank you for watching. Alright everybody, what's up? Let's try this again. It probably won't work, so let's just do, uh, do it real quick. So uh, I'm going to show you guys how to process some pictures in Lightburn. And what you want to do first of all is you want to go to File, top left corner, Import, or either press Control and I at the same time. That's the shortcut, but you're going to hit that. You want to go into your Downloads folder or wherever you store your picture at, and you want to double click it. Boom! It's going to bring it right into your workspace. That was pretty easy. Now, what we want to do is we want to take this picture and we want to adjust it, get it ready for laser engraving. So we're going to go to Adjust Image. You're going to right-click the image, and that'll bring up this menu. Go to Adjust Menu at the bottom here, where, where I'm at. Click that. You're going to see that it is already in the right image mode. I wanted it in, I want it in Jarvis, but you've got a lot to pick from here. Uh, probably the best two for photo uh, engraving is Jarvis and Stucky. I have my best uh, my best picture, my best engravings come out typically with those. Um, there's some other uses for these other ones, but typically Stucky and Jarvis is what I'm going to go with when I'm doing a picture. This picture itself is 96 dots per inch. I took that and I tripled the amount of DPI for the engraving. Now why I did that was I wanted more dots in these areas to make these areas darker. Um, if I'd went 96 DPI, it would have came out, and you could have you could tell who this is. It just wouldn't be as nice as it is with the triple the amount of uh, of uh, dots that being used. Now, if you go too high, you run into the problem where you'll burn out a lot of your detail. So it is important that you try to find a good DPI for each image, and finding the dots per inch that the image started out with is a good place to start. Um, don't be discouraged. Sometimes I do pictures. I might think I'll have one perfectly 100% ready to go. I'll hit the engrave button and it'll look totally awful and I'll have to do it again. Sometimes I may do a picture two or three times, uh, depending, maybe even more than that, um, just to get the settings right. But now that we've got it in Jarvis mode and our DPI set, 
we're going to come over here. I'm going to look at Enhance Radius and Enhance Amount. I'm going to turn Enhance Radius up and I'm going to go up to 25 on that. I'm going to go to Enhance Amount and I'm going to flip this guy up to 100. Now what that does is it sharpens. It's basically sharpen. Um, if you're used to photo editing, that's that's sharpening the image. But it's sharpening the dither patterns, what it's doing. And it's enhancing those dither, those dots. So that's why it's called enhance over sharpening. But it squeezes those dots to together and just makes it a little bit more crisp. And we have all these extra dots in the background, all these grays and all this stuff. We can save ourselves a little bit of time and probably make him look a little bit better by just turning our brightness up to about 7 here. And you can see we have really lightened up the face, so all those whites are going to shine through. Those light grays are going to get engraved, and you're going to end up with a really nice pattern on the face there, especially right in here. That's going to look good. And uh, right through in here, all this stuff's going to look great. And you've removed a lot of these excess of uh, dots out here in the background, so that's going to cut down on your time by, you know, a few minutes. But every little minute counts, especially when you're doing an engraving like this. So, now that we've got that all set up, I'm going to hit OK. And I have it ready to go. Um, so... Another trick I'll show you that I like, um, get your square tool, make a square anywhere, make sure it's a line, not a filled in square, but a line square. It doesn't matter what size, just make one. Hit your um, selection tool again, it'll automatically select the square that you just made. If not, you're going to have to select that first. Then hold down your control button and click on the picture. So hold down the control button, click the picture. Both of these should now be having the little dancing lines around them. Go up to the top and you have make selected items the same width, make selected items the same height, and then you got align both vertical and horizontal centers. Boom. You've got a perfect cut line around that picture now. So there's no goofy making a square and going up here and adjusting the width and height the same as this. You just bam, three buttons and you're ready to go. Now that we have all that ready, we are going to highlight everything because I have cut selected graphics and I usually go to preview and you'll see it looks kind of bad in here. I never really go by this preview image when you're doing pictures. It always looks worse than what it actually comes out. When you actually zoom in, you, you do see it. This is really more of what it would look like, but when you zoom out, it's like really dark. It looks almost like a negative image. but. You still want to press this because you want to see, um, make sure you don't, it's not negative because sometimes you'll have the negative or the invert button hit. And it also tells you how long it's going to take. So you're about 29 minutes and 4 seconds here. That's okay with me, so I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go over to my power settings. They're already set up. I go 200 um, speed, millimeters per second is what I run. And then um, 30 is my max power. And... I run a 100 watt CO2 with a two and a half inch lens. Um, depending on the machine you have and what wattage your tube is, that's going to vary. So. And this is it, uh, without any sanding or anything. So let's get it sanded and we'll see what it looks like in the end. What's up everybody? Uh, well, it came out really good, I think. Um, here, here it is. Try to bring it up a little bit, it's a little tough. I'm not very good with cameras and such, but you can see. Got some really good details in there. Um, Especially right there, you can see like the burlap pattern in the face. I like that. Um, even from a distance, you still know exactly what that is. And a lot of times that's what I run into when I'm doing like pictures. It's too light, too dark. So it's really what I try to avoid. Um, too dark and you end up losing details or it won't look good. Like that burlap would have been like not that nice little pattern there. It's dark, you know. 
burned all that detail out and it would have been it wouldn't have been nice at all but uh so um if you enjoyed the video if you learned anything be sure to leave a like subscribe leave uh comments down below of any suggestions any ideas anything that you uh you would like to learn more about um i'll be happy to uh if i don't know i'll research and try to find out and make a video about it 